Hello, welcome to part two of our tutorials for closed loop force control. Today we're going to discuss the force control motion commands and how to use them with your Linmont drive. An overview of the motion commands available for force control can be found in the documentation in Linmont Talk. This list contains all the motion commands available and a brief description on how to use them. We're going to be making a command table program to showcase how these commands can be used. To do this, I'm going to navigate to the command table in the tree in Lamont Talk. Double click on the line to bring up the motion command options. Change the category to all and scroll down to find the force control commands. We're going to be using this command VAI go to position with higher force control limit and target force. This command handles the transition from position control to force control. The drive will attempt to go towards the target position at the prescribed velocity, monitoring the load cell. When the input from the load cell reaches the limit force specified here, the drive will switch into force control mode and attempt to reach the target force specified here. In this example, I'm going to specify a target position of 70 millimeters, a limit force of 14 newtons, and a target force of 15 newtons. When I press apply, this program is added to the command table. If I'm in force control and want to change the target force, I can use the command force control change target force. But let's say I want to transition from force control back to position control. The command that accomplishes this is VAI go to position from actual position and reset force control. This command will send the motor to the target position and switch the drive from force control back to position control. I'm going to use the default settings for this command to send my drive back to zero millimeters. Now that I have the two commands that I'm going to be using, I need to download my command table into the drive using this download to drive button. Note that I'll need to stop the firmware in order to do this. I'll need to modify some settings in my drive in order to execute this command table using a trigger. First, I'm going to configure the trigger input of the drive on X4.6 in this case. Then I'm going to make sure to set up the trigger as direct. Next, I need to change the run mode of the drive to triggered command table mode. I can specify which lines will be executed here. I'm going to execute my force control command on the trigger's rise and execute my reset command on the trigger's fall. This one and two corresponds to the line numbers in the command table program I made earlier. Now that I've got the program set up, I'm ready to restart the firmware and attempt to run this program. Once I've switched on and home the drive, I can simulate an input on X4.6 using this manual override and override value checkboxes in the IO panel. I can see here that the measured force is around 14.7 newtons and my target force is 15 newtons. I can tell that my drive is in force control because the special motion active bit of the status word is set to one. Note that the special motion active bit can also apply to other special motions in the drive, such as homing. Unchecking the X4.6 value box will execute the trigger fall command, which will send the drive back to zero millimeters and return it to position control. We can now see that the special motion active bit is set to zero. Closed loop force control uses a separate PID loop, which can be tuned. A good tool to tune the PID loop is the oscilloscope. I'm going to set up the oscilloscope to capture some data about our system so that we can make changes to our PID accordingly. I'm going to capture the measured force, the target force, the special motion active bit, so I can see when the drive is in force control, and the actual position. Next, I'm going to set up the oscilloscope trigger so that it will capture data when the drive enters special motion active. I'm going to add a pre-trigger of 
More information about the drives oscilloscope can be found in a separate Linmod tutorial. I arm the oscilloscope by clicking this start button. I can see in the bottom left that the oscilloscope is waiting for the trigger condition. When I send the input to X4.6 again, the command table line 1 will execute. The oscilloscope has new data. I'll use the fit view, same unit, same fit, to put all the data on the screen at once. This green line shows where the drive enters force control state. The blue line is the target force. We can see that the measured force is close, but not quite reaching the target force. I'm going to alter the drive's PID settings for force control, which can be found in the force control parameter section of the parameter tree here. I've lowered the p-gain a bit for the purposes of this video, but now I'll boost it back to the default value so that you can see what change this will have. I'll duplicate the oscilloscope so that I'll have a new oscilloscope with the same parameter and trigger settings, then arm it to record. When I run the program again, I'll be able to see what effect my changes had. This new oscilloscope trace shows that the measured force is much closer to the target force than it was before. Using information from the oscilloscope, the drive's P, I, and D gain values can be changed accordingly in order to enhance the system performance. This is especially useful when dealing with flexible materials or dynamic conditions. Thanks for watching.